Right, we're back on our little parlor project here. We're gonna be making this into a bit of a kitchen space. Stick around, we're gonna make a start on this ceiling. I am gonna be using up what we've got here. I probably will need to cut them, but I might just see if... Yeah. Yeah, we just have to cut the angle off the end, but lengthwise is okay. And we'll set these, although it's a little bit alien to me, I'm gonna set them at imperial sort of uh, two foot sensors because plywood, the plywood that we're using is four foot board. So if I do that, then there's minimal cutting. I know it's a comical size saw, but I don't have any batteries charged. Oh, it's such a shame. I think it's all that galvanised sheet that was up there. All of these wall plates have got to be replaced. I mean, the whole roof, arguably, because when you start replacing the wall plate, I'm guessing we're going to have to take all those rafters off it. But it's just super soft over there. It's, it's structurally okay for now, but ugh, annoying. Well, while I was cutting that one, I just had a crazy thought. Mainly because of the roof, the ceiling height is quite low. Not crazy low, but they're about 2.2 meters, something like that. I was going to plywood underneath them, either paint it or whatever. But actually, there's nothing to say that we can't put the plywood on top of these. Of course, that would be tidying these up a bit. But I can pull them down and run over them with a belt sander. And then we can wax these, plywood over the top of them. Plywood could just stay, you know, as it is, or varnish, some water-based varnish. That way you've got 2.4 metre ceiling in between, and you've got all these which we can hang stuff on. And if we are trying to use this for nice photos and stuff of all the produce, it might have a bit more character to it. Right, back from school sports day and I've been thinking a little bit more on this ceiling. I think if we do go for the idea of putting the plywood on top and feature beams, then we need to account for the fact that when the plywood hits the rafters up at this height here, then there'll be an exposed bit of the angled ceiling. So it won't be quite as simple as going wall to wall. I think that should still be okay. It just means probably an extra hour or two of putting battens and board across here and I probably won't easily be able to insulate in there. Right, what I'm thinking now, now I've got a bit of a central noggin in. It's not, it's a bit off centre because it's the length of a full sheet, just means all my joints are covered. I'm thinking I might get a sheet of plywood up there now. Uh, do I need to do that? 
Probably don't, but I just want to see how it looks. I think it looks okay. I guess the question is whether we should paint it. Because uh, it's going to be a lot easier to paint before it goes up. If we want it a lighter colour. I'm going to wax the beams as they are. It also means we can hang things on here or put hooks and make things a little bit more farmy. The other option is make a loft. We've got all that storage. These are strong enough to take some weight, even if it's just lightweight things up there. Right, we're back on it. Uh, unfortunately, we got a bit sidetracked for two weeks. However, nothing much has changed. You haven't missed anything. I'm gonna get on and finish the ceiling today, hopefully with a bit of help. So this is this regular hardwood Chinese ply. Uh, it should sit flat enough, it's smooth enough. So if we get these painted, I can then just climb up on top and screw them down to our joist and the white will be nice and bright. So what we're going to use is just 50-50 contract emulsion and water and see if that will leave a bit of the grain showing through. I think we're set up now. So we water down the paint. Set up with a dirty stick. Good, isn't it? Wipe it off now with a rag or something. I mean, it might take two coats to get it bright enough. We have found a technique. We're not sure if it's going to take one or two coats, but this is the watered down. What we're, going to, we're doing is rolling it on and then uh, wiping it off with a roller, but not rolling it, if that makes sense. That way it's not textured. And then it keeps the grain. Right, I've got that other test one down. So as you can imagine, it's drying super quick. We're going to try and just throw up the first two full-size boards. The rest of them are half boards. I can manage myself. But if there's three of us here, we should be able to get them up. The main danger is going to be scratching our paint off them. And even if we left it for days to dry, I don't think it'd be any more robust. So I've just stapled on some carpet underlay on the two bits that we're going to basically slide it up and across. Okay, so you just rest it there. You said rest, but now you're pushing. Okay. So I'm going to have your little stick on the pad. Told me about the pearling. Sorry. Amazing. I managed to lift them up in the triangle. So, <laughs> this is the most over insulated outbuilding I've ever seen. But... Uh -huh. Right, unfortunately, I've got no track saw because I lent it to my brother. But that should be fine. These are pretty rough cuts as it is. That's straight. Oh, it's so bright. But he'll do it again. He'll do it again. If you've used this plover before, or left it out, or even in a damp garage, you'll know that it quite often gets grey, sort of black marks and mould on it. Um, if you seal it, 
with varnish or something, then it's fine. But I'm not really going to be too worried. And I've also got the insulation above it, so hopefully it'll be all right. But it's not. They call it external plywood or exterior plywood, this stuff. I would never use it, ex like I've used it before for little things and the, the veneer is so, so thin, it just fails. Uh, but for this sort, I use it more for boxing and stuff interior wise. Uh, so I don't know why they call it exterior, it's probably just the adhesive that they use. Uh, I need to get up there now with some screws. Remember, I'm trying to do this in a way that I can take it all down in a couple of years' time and salvage materials. Hence why I've gone with plywood, so I can put in some screws from above rather than nails. That'd be easy enough to remove. Then I'll dry lay the uh, Kingspan sheets over the top of that. But I think it's quite effective. Of course, these are dictated by the wall plates, but just having that little void there is quite cool. And I think we should just be able to like light it a bit nicer now and hang stuff off the beams and make it a little bit more quirky than otherwise. And now I need to cut this triangle in here. The nice thing is we've got a vent up there, which is a proper air brick. So we've got plenty of ventilation above. Right, pretty much no light up here. So I'll get on and screw these down. Everything's cut and fit, these four boards. And then we'll do the triangle one after. Just got 40 mil screws. 30 mil screws even. And I'm relying on my impact driver light. Now the plywood is not sat on anything at the moment, so I now need to put a batten. I've got a piece of 50 by 50. I'm gonna put along the top there. What are the chances of these all fitting? Very soon I'll find a, a bigger ladder. Until then, I'll pretend I'm an Olympic gymnast. If my calculations are correct, we should end up with a full sheet this side. Oh, that'll go. Go on. Oh! You absolute beauty. Doesn't get much better than that. That's three full size sheets uncut. Uh, and obviously the, that wall is a little bit off, so my last two I'll have to scribe in a bit. Oh no, I'm quite far away from my ladder. Damn it. Okay, that's enough. That's the last time I'm doing that. You're getting too old, Jim. Right, quick change of camera. That one is in now, uh, mitered into there. Probably gonna take a few mil off this board just as a bit of a wany edge on that corner and I want the latch, the loft hatch to sit on something nicely or I could double this one up. Still probably needs to put a timber uh, across here although if I don't store anything on there it depends how much that warps I guess. I tell you what, I could do carpentry like this all day long. Bit rustic, but structural, but and strong. Fitting kitchens and bathrooms, I'm fed up with that at the moment, so this is a nice change. Cool, so there is our opening. I think that's a good size. By the time the ladder's on there, you still get something fairly sizable up through there. Let's go cut that bit, we should be able to get that out of the scrap. Then we'll cut this little bit, then we'll insulate and then we'll have a cup of tea. I've now put in the loft hatch. I need to do a little bit of sorting on that because it's, uh, it's a little bit tight. I want it to pop up easily and then I'll be gluing the 
insulation to that piece. So I'll probably just loose lay the rest and tape them together with some foil tape. So it's highly likely I'm not going to get around to doing those little fussy bits today. So I'm going to leave this video here. If you haven't checked out the previous videos of what we took on at the beginning of this, then uh, I will maybe make a playlist out of these videos because I thought it was going to be a quick one, but it seems to be quite a... Uh, a full, well, mini series, let's call it. Uh, floor's gonna be the next thing to sort once I've done the last bits of the ceiling. I think I deserve an ice cream, so I'm gonna leave it there. Thank you for watching. Remember, if you can, do it yourself, and we'll see you next time. Oh, and if you're still with me, by the time this is done, we will have a load of products coming off the farm. We've got uh, our free range pig boxes, and also uh, hogget and lamb, and possibly goat all packs like large boxes that's how we're going to do it at the moment so if you want to fill your freezer up then let us know we might get, uh, start putting a link either on our website but otherwise if you just dm me or send me a message or an email we can arrange that we're not going to be able to courier stuff out yet but if you're happy to come and pick it up then do so let me know